Uh, before I started, I want to say sorry in advance because my internet is kind of uh, unstable. <laughs> so if you see a delay, please uh, be patient. <laughs> Okay, you can start and I will tell you when you have three minutes left. Okay, so hello everybody, my name is Anna and today I'm going to talk about my thesis project called Boosted Frame Simulations of Gamma Ray Burst. Um, this is the overview of my presentation. First, I'm going to talk about what inspired this work. Then I will, I will tell you about the Boosted Frame the conditions we assume, the important equations, and I will show you some tests that we did. And finally, I will share with you my conclusions. Well, um, the motivation of my talk. Um, can you see the next slide with a, uh, okay. Um, as you heard yesterday, <laughs> ERBs are huge explosions triggered by the collapse of a massive star core or the collision of a compact binary system. The fireball that is created expands with a Lorentz factor of hundreds. And the part that I was interested on is the prom emission. The prom emission origin comes from the internal shocks. These internal shocks develop when a faster shell tries to overtake a slower one. So there are analytical models in one direction that solve the internal shocks, but they suppose that the shells are uh, perfectly homogeneous and have a rectangular shape. But as we can see in the image, the, the, inter the shells doesn't have a, a specific structure. So, and also there are a few papers of numerical simulations that solve internal shocks, but they don't explain how they really solve them. So making these simulations are challenging because the internal shocks have to travel um, long distance. So we, we are going to need a bigger box for the simulation. Also these ultra relativistic velocities are difficult to implement because there could be numerical problems or bigger errors, such as if we have a small error in the determination of the velocity, um, this could lead us to a very large error in the Lorentz factor. So in order to solve this problem, we, have the, we had the idea to plot the simulation in a system of reference that moves with the fluid. Uh, this is a boosted frame. In this frame, uh, the shells will have a uh, mildly relativistic velocities. And since all the distances or sizes are going to contract on the boosted frame, we are going to need uh, a smaller box for the simulation. Also, we could have better a better resolution in the discontinuity contact surface between the shells. And with these lower velocities, we could minimize the numerical problems we have. Now I'm going to talk about the boosted frame. Um, summarizing what I said uh, before, we assume an ultra relativistic object that is moving through a static medium. But as I said, it's kind of difficult to implement this kind of velocities. So the idea is to do the simulation in a system of reference uh, that moves with a certain Lorentz factor in the same direction as the propagation of the object. In this boosted frame, the object moves with a lower Lorentz factor that in the lab frame, and the medium moves with the same Lorentz factor, but in the opposite direction. So my talk consists in the implementation of a boosted frame into the special relativistic hydrodynamic code and MESCAD. Um, there are some conditions we have to take uh, before the boosted frame implementation. 
The first one is that we know the evolution of the object at times before changing between systems. And the second one is that we assume that in the lab frame, the object is propagating in a static medium. Um, with this in mind, and after doing some maths, in the boosted frame, the object is going to have a Lorentz factor given by this equation. So for instance, an object with a Lorentz factor of 1000 in the lab frame uh, moves with a Lorentz factor of 22 in the boosted frame. So it reduces a lot. Um, to change it between the different systems of reference, we use the Lorentz transformations, but we have a problem. As we can see in this diagram, different positions at the left frame tend us to different times and positions in the boosted frame. So we have to define a specific time to start the simulation in the boosted frame. This time is given by the left frame condition. So with this time setting, we only use the Lorentz transformations to change between systems or reference. Now I'm gonna show you different objects moving through Moving in the boosted frame. Uh, the first test cell that originates with a Lorentz factor of 100 in the lab frame, but in the boosted frame moves with a Lorentz factor of 7. And these are maps of density, and as we can see here, um, the shell, uh, after some time of evolution, contracts almost all of them, and we kind of have a lateral grow that could be interesting for the dynamics problem uh, of the internal shocks. Um, my next uh, test is an spherical explosion that in the lab frame used to be an homogeneous sphere. But as I said before, uh, different positions lab frame to different times and positions in the boosted frame. So these are maps of density again, and we can see a gradient of density inside of the sphere. And this is because the density uh, depends on the position inside of the sphere, and it is the same as the... Um, you have three minutes left. Uh, okay, uh, I almost done. It's the same as, the, as we are in the boosted frame and try to come back to the lab frame. We different... At each point, we have uh, different times at the boosted frame. Also, the arrows represent the velocity at each point, and we can see some kind of radial velocities, but they are not radial at all. And this is because we have to do the transformation of the velocity as well as the coordinates with using Lorentz transformation. And my finite tail test is a conical jet that moves with a Lorentz factor of 10 in the lab frame and in the boosted frame moves with a Lorentz factor of three. And the same as the sphere, we can see that inside of the jet, we don't have radial uh, velocities that we're supposed to have in the lab frame. And that is because we are changing between systems. And also we see a big region of density. And this is because uh, we have two convergent flows that in the middle forms uh, this density region. And finally, my conclusions. Uh, in this presentation, I told you about the boosted frame implementation and some examples, but we have a lot of work to do. For instance, we have to develop the comeback to the lab frame and also make some tests to make sure everything works as they're supposed to work. And But the important thing is that there are a lot of problems that can be solved much more efficiently by using a boosted frame. As I said before, we could solve the dynamics problem of re realistic internal shocks in DRBs. Also, as we see in the shell test, we can study their lateral energy distribution. And another problem that could be solved in a boosted frame is the moment when the reverse shock disappears, and that is the transition between the jet and shell in the prime emission. Um, that's all. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a question about uh, Diego. Diego, can you ask your question, please? 
Yeah, is, is your model only valid for a static medium or can the medium have a velocity component? So it could have a velocity component, but the equation that I showed you uh, of the Lorentz factor of the object Lorentz factor is going to change, but we only have to change that equation inside of the subroutine, and everything works uh, the same. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see no other questions, so maybe I will ask uh, my question. It's very naive. Uh, I, I am not sure I understand completely what is analytical and what is numerical in this uh, model. So I understand that you do numerical simulation, but the, the change of uh, frame, is it completely analytical or is it uh, numerical also? It is. Mm, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's analytical to change between okay. systems. Only, we only use the Lorentz transformation. But the idea is to solve all the evolution of the jet inside of the boosted frame. Mm -hmm. And then pass it to the lab frame. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Rosa, you, you had a question or not? I uh, guess if this could be done for another subroutine, for example, for uh, what we saw yesterday with Gerardo and um, uh, Fernanda, could be improved and the results with your code? Yes, 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 that's the idea <laughs> uh, to help to, but for example, in Gerardo's simulations, he started at a certain time when the jet has a, a lower Lorentz factor of 20s or 30s, I don't remember. But the idea is to implement this, boost, this boosted frame to Gerardo simulations and maybe start the, the simulations at early times with higher learning factor. But yeah. Okay, so we were supposed to have a coffee break after the